Welcome back to Climate Unbox. Today's video is going to be about how we combine different data sets. We can add or we can subtract, multiply, divide, or we can take the minimum of two files, the maximum, or the arc tangent. So there are many examples where we might want to use these functionalities. We might want to calculate anomalies, the difference between a model and its long-term mean or biases between a model and observations, or we might want to normalize a field by dividing it by its own standard deviation over time. So let's go ahead and look at some examples. Now, one example is the bias. Now, this is very simple. We need to use CDO sub and then file one, file two, and the difference. Notice that in contrast to many previous commands that we've seen in CDO, we now need to have two input file names, file one and file two. If we provide only one input file name, then CDO will throw an error because it's expecting two input file names. Sometimes when we do this, you'll see this error. Often when you download data such as the reanalysis, it may be stored in a packed format in order that the data set is half the size. Now, when you go to combine two files that have both been packed, then you can't do that without losing accuracy, which is why you get this warning. Now, to get around that, it's best to convert the output into a floating point. And you can see actually in the command, it gives you the option how to do this, minus B F32 for a four byte float or F64 for an eight byte double position float. Right after CDO, we need to add minus B and then a space and then F32. So the file size will be twice as large, but now we have an accurate calculation because of the floating point conversion. And don't forget, both fields need to have the same spatial grid. If the fields are not on the same grid, an error will occur. In that case, you will need to remap either the observations to the model or the model to the observations. And I've already outlined how to do that in an earlier video, which you can see in the pop-up banner right above my head. Okay, so that was fairly straightforward. Let's look at another example now. What about if we have a file which has multiple time steps? Now, in this case, the upper row is illustrating a file which is a function of latitude, longitude, and time. The lower is another row of data, which is also a function of latitude, longitude, and, and time. And if we simply say CDO sub or CDO add, it will add or subtract each time slice in the file with its corresponding slice in the file below. Now it does this in a blind fashion. If the dates are different, it doesn't matter to CDO. It will simply take the first slice in the input data set and the first slice in the output data set and subtract the two. But what about now if you want to calculate anomalies? Now, if we want to calculate anomalies, the first file, the input data file, is a function of time, so we still have multiple time slices as before. But now when we construct the time mean, we end up with just one single slice. So we have CDO time mean to get the time mean average. So now on the lower row, we only have one slice. Now, if I want to calculate the anomaly and I say CDO sub, what's going to happen? Well, first time input has a corresponding slice in the second file, but then the second time slice doesn't have a corresponding slice in the third and the fourth and the fifth. So what's CDO going to do to resolve this problem? So welcome to the art of broadcasting. Broadcasting is a technique whereby we can extend a file in time. So what CDO does is it says, oh, hang on a second. The second and the third and the fourth time slices are missing. It broadcasts the existing data. It takes that first time slice and we can imagine it's duplicating it as ghost slices and spreads these out in time. So that same field is repeated and you will actually get a message from CDO telling you that it's doing this. So now if we take CDO time mean in time mean, we can then do CDO sub, the input data set, and then time mean as our second file, and then we can write anon. And what it will do is it will subtract 
the time mean from all of the input time slices. Now this will work in the same way if the second file has more than one slice. So in this case we have an illustration where we have three slices. So what happens? CDOs, when it gets to the end of the second file, it simply cycles around and reuses those slices. So those three slices will be duplicated and then duplicated and duplicated until eventually we end up with a second file with the same number of slices. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you can see straight away that this is going to be very useful to de-seasonalize data sets. If we actually have a first data set which has multiple years, we can imagine monthly data here. So on my top left, right here, we have year one of the input data set and I'm gonna move myself over. And then here we have year two, and then here we have year three and so on and so forth. Now in the second row, we have a seasonal mean. And then we've already seen again how to calculate seasonal cycles. So we have CDO Y Mun mean, and that gives us an output, which is the average of the Januaries, the average of the Februaries, the averages of the Marches. And so that second data set will have 12 slices. So CDO performs the broadcast in exactly the same way. If we have a input data set that's more than one year, then it will duplicate those 12 months in another 12 month block and so on and so forth until we have the same number of slices. We can subtract the year mum mean file from the input data file and we end up with a file that's actually de-seasonalized. Now remember again a word of warning, CDO doesn't care about the actual date. It will simply take the first slice in the input and start subtracting the first slice. So they both need to point to January. So let's imagine a situation now where we've got some calculation of the annual mean and that's been performed from a file that started in January. So the year mum mean gives us a file that starts in January, but then we want to subtract it from a different data set that starts in October. What we want is to subtract the January average from the January, but CDO simply lines up the start of these two files. So what CDO would actually be doing would be subtracting the January average from October. Now we can get around this by using more robust commands. Rather than simply using sub, we can actually specify the kind of subtraction that we want to do. So we can do year mun sub, which means take away the averaged y mun mean from the in, and it actually ensures that each date is lined up with the correct monthly date in the input. This is for monthly subtractions, but of course we can do the same thing if we have a daily seasonal cycle. So let's look at the range of commands that allow us to lock in the timestamp used in the comparison. So here I'm using the example of sub for subtract, but of course this applies to all of the mathematical commands of addition, multiplication and division. So in addition to CDO sub, for example, we also have CDO Yman sub that we've just seen for seasonal cycle manipulation. We have the newly added day sub, we have mum sub, and then we have year sub finally. Now all of these allow us to lock in the time of the comparison. Now behind me, let's take another example. I'll move myself to one side. And so here we have our hypothetical data set where we have three years of data at a monthly time step. And I want to set you a mission. Now, the mission, should you choose to accept it, is I want you to calculate the anomaly of each month, but not with respect to the whole time series, as we've shown earlier in the video, but now the anomaly with respect to each specific year. So how are we gonna do this? Well, first of all, we need to calculate the yearly mean. So we know how to do this, CDO year mean. That gives us a second data set where each step is the average of all of the 12 individual months in that particular year. So now if we want to calculate the anomaly, we need to subtract this new yearly mean from the original data set. But if we just use the command CDO sub, what will happen? Well, all of those three steps, of course, are considered straight away bunched up at the beginning, so to speak, 
And then when we go to subtract, CDO says, well, hang on a second, I need to broadcast, I only have three steps. And so it basically duplicates those three steps time after time. So we have year one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, obviously that's not what we want, is it? Because we're going to be subtracting the first year from January, but then February of the first year will have the second year subtracted from it. What we actually want to do is lock in the years. So this is where year sub comes in. With year sub instead, the CDO calculation locks in the year. It says, okay, from the first year, I need to take the step with the same year. And I use broadcasting to duplicate that for the other 11 missing steps. Then the second year is duplicated 11 times to be subtracted from the second year and so on. And so we finally have a correct anomaly where the anomaly is with respect to each individual specific year. So we can do this on any time scale using day sub, month sub, or year sub. So, so let's look at an example, shall we? In this directory, I have one file. And if I open up the file using NC view, just to take a quick look, here we have the sea surface temperature, SST, units of Kelvin, and the first entry is for January 1979. And we have February, March, we have monthly mean data. And there are 504 time slices in this file. If I animate, you can see the seasonal cycle of the sea surface temperature. Now, what we want to do is just simply calculate the anomaly. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the time average with Tim mean over the entire data set. And so the input, of course, is the input file name and the output I'm going to call SST mean. And there we have it. We have two files now. The second, of course, is much smaller. If I say CDO show date, should have just one slice inside, as we see, which is set for the middle of the series, as we saw in an earlier video. Now, to calculate the anomaly, we need to subtract these two. So we can do CDO sub and then SST all, all and then SST mean. And then we need an output file. So here we have three file names. We need the first two that we're subtracting one from the other. And then we have SST anon.nc. And we have a message that says CDO sub filling up stream two by copying the first time step. And that's because CDO has noticed that the number of slices in both files is different. And so this is telling us that it's performing the broadcasting, that the first slice, which is essentially the mean, has now been duplicated to have as many steps as necessary to perform the operation. Now the output file, of course, has the same number of slices as the input file. And so the size is very similar. There's a very small difference in size due to the fact that the metadata in the file will have changed. If I open that with NC view, we have the monthly anomaly with respect to the long-term mean. And it goes from minus 15 up to about five. A little trick, if you have an anomaly in NC view, you can click on range and you can say symmetric around zero. So this sets a symmetric range and in NC view, there are also some nice color scales that, for example, are centered around green. Let's choose one which goes from blue for cold and red to hot. Now, if instead we wanted to calculate the anomaly with respect to each individual year, then remember that all we need to do is CDO year sub, and then we need the Second file will be the annual mean. So we need to calculate that first, of course. So we say year mean. Now we take the monthly file, SST, I'm gonna call it year mean. And now we can say CDO, year sub, SST all, SST year mean, SST year anon. And this instead would be locking in each individual year. Now, word of warning, remember, if instead of year sub, we hadn't locked in the years and we had just done sub, 
and I'm going to give this a different name. I'm going to call it SST Anom Wrong because this is not the correct way of actually achieving what we want. Now what is happening is that the first year is being subtracted from January the first year, but the second year is being subtracted from February of the first year. Now the reason I want to show you this wrong way of calculating is if we open both of these files. Okay, this is the correct way of calculating the anomaly. And if we now open up the incorrect one, so the years are not locked in, the differences are quite subtle because both of them are calculating the anomaly of each month with respect to a specific year, but it's not the correct year. So this is an example where even if the map that you produce looks correct, it might not be the actual right answer. Because the broadcasting, while it's very powerful, is also a little bit dangerous because it always gives you an answer. And that answer can look reasonable, but it may not be what you're actually intending to calculate, as we can see here. So there we have it. In the video, we've seen how we can manipulate files and how broadcasting is extremely useful. We can apply manipulations between two data sets, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, without having the same number of time steps in each file. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you found the material helpful and useful, so you get notifications of my new videos that sporadically come out, and I look forward to seeing you again soon on Planet Unboxed. So there we have it. We've seen how we can very quickly and easily combine files together using sub, mol, div, and um, 